Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? I'm just chasing up the field here because this combine is almost full. Um, it's on 80%. And then we're going to do our little road train all the way up to the pigs. And I've got another two-wheel trailer, just a little Brantner. And that one is back in the yard, ready and waiting. And what I think we'll do is I'd like the combine to stop when it gets down to the other end of the field. I tell... Um, Yes, what we'll do is let's just go around and load up because I want to make sure that I've got enough ground here for it to do the other bit that I'm going to do. Now we're going to drive on the crop. I've started doing this a bit in the time lapse, some of you will have noticed. And um, the reason being, the amount of land, the amount of grain that we lose when we drive on the crop is so minimal in value compared to the amount of time it takes to back the combine out round and do it that way. Uh, I feel it's more profitable just to drive on the crop and then keep things moving. So I do do that a bit. I'm doing it more in the time lapse than I will in any of the Let's Plays. Uh, but I will occasionally do it in the Let's Plays as well. I'm not going to be rigidly sticking to not driving on the crop. It's not best practice, I know. But I have seen videos in real life um, the YouTube videos for real life farming where farmers actually do that. It is uncommon, okay? I haven't seen it done very much. I haven't seen very many videos where it is done. Normally the combine would drive in such a way that the um, unloading auger is on the outside rather than on the inside. But, you know, it does occasionally happen that they don't run like that um, for whatever reason. And so you will sometimes find people drive on the crop. Um, while I wait for that one to come up, my weekly question this week is I am offering you the chance to choose how we do our uh, leasing and buying of equipment in Water Valley in our next map. Um, we can either uh, buy everything. Option one is to buy absolutely everything and not lease any machinery at all. Option two is to lease everything except for some of the drivable machines. We know from experience in Goldcrest that if we um, lease some of the tractors, it becomes too expensive to be profitable. So we have to buy some of the tractors, but everything else in Goldcrest we lease. So do you want me to do it like that and only buy very, very few of the drivable machines that we use on a regular basis? Or do you want me to do a combination of the two? buy when we can afford it but lease when we can't afford it so that we can keep getting the machinery and keeping things moving and once again i am asking you please go for option three um or option two if you really want but um, i'm asking you not to go for option one because we don't have any owned land in uh, unowned land in water valley we don't have any farmers owning the land in water valley that we can do contracting jobs for so if i need to go and get some machinery really quickly um, or need, I need some um, like an urgent injection of cash. It's going to be a lot more difficult Which if you ask me to buy everything is is just going to make things a lot more complicated and awkward and difficult in general So I'm asking you very kindly not to make me do that However, it is your vote and it is your game that I play so if you choose Then so be it. That's what we'll have to do But I'm asking you very nicely if you could not do that to me, please um, so yeah, head in the comment section down below, let us know which one you're going to vote for, and of course don't forget to actually mouse over in the top right hand corner to cast your vote, and um, like I said, I'm asking you, but it's your vote, so if you choose to take it a different way, that's entirely up to you, there's not a lot that I can do about it. Now what, I've got an extra trailer here, because I've told you I'm going to do a quick run up to the pigs with some grain. Um, but we've not got very much of any of the protein crops at the moment. We've got some in the ground that are ready, uh, are going to be ready to harvest soon, but they're not quite ready yet. So what I'm going to do is I'll unhitch there, and I'm going to park the Zeta, just drop it in here very quickly. There we go. So it is undercover. There we go. And I'm going to run in here, and I'm going to get the Massey. I'll unhitch the IT runner. Come on to there. Turn it on. Go to that one, unhitch the IT runner and the muck spreader that can stay right there. And spin round in a circle. So we've got a bit more power to pull this road train. We've got a four trailer road train here, which is pretty epic, I think. Um, we will put canola in one and it will put it uh, the canola into... So what have we got? We get 8,500 litres in one of these trailers, which is not too shabby, actually. 
But what we need to do is we need to make sure we come in from the other. If we go in from this direction, we could accidentally fill a trailer up with seed. And we really, really don't want to do that. So we have to come in from this side. It's a mistake that Giants have admitted to on here. They said that they put it too close together. They can't do anything about it this time, but they've learned their lesson. And they will not be doing that again. So we do have to come in from this direction in order that we don't accidentally fill our trailer with seed. Um, and we've got 62,000 litres of corn. 4,000 of soybeans and 5,000 of canola. So we're going to put the canola in this one. We'll put the beans in that one. And then the biggest trailer, the one at the back, that's the one we're going to fill with corn. So let's come through here to the next one. There we go. And put the beans into that one. 4,000 litres of beans. And then finally, in the very back trailer, we will put the corn. And we'll fill that one right up with corn. There we go. We've got a field of corn over there, and we've got another... Do we have another field of corn somewhere? I can't remember now. Um, growth, soil composition, fruit types. Right, so we've got corn... No, we don't. We've got wheat in those two fields, and then we've got canola in those fields. This up here hasn't been planted yet, so whoever is going to take over the map and is going to... Ha uh, however you want to do things, I'm not actually going to sheet these trailers down. Um, I wonder if we can, actually. You, you can't cheat down the small ones, so as we can't cheat down the small ones, there seems to be little point in cheating any of them down. Coming across here, I probably should have checked for traffic then. It takes quite a while to run through. This act, this road train does look pretty cool. I was wondering if we should stick the water bowser on the back, but it's already up there at the pigs, and they don't actually need water at the moment. So we'll come up through here, and then once we've done this bit, I've got something else that I would like to try in this episode, um, and... Possibly we'll get started on a little bit of baling today as well. I'm not sure if we'll be able to, but like I said, I promised you I would use that baler and the Arkizan before we leave this map. Um, and I'm thinking I'm not going to give a vote on which baler we use in Mortier Valley. I'm just going to use the Coon DLC baler um, and carry on from there because you did vote for me to use it and I've not used it at all. So rather than just using it for one single episode, I will use it a bit more than that and start using it when we're in New Zealand. Um, that might be a good way round, I think. This, this does look pretty epic. This does look pretty cool. Nice purple trailers. It's always good to have purple. A little bit disappointed that we can't have purple anymore, but um, there we go. Um, I might maybe for another map just say I'm going to have purple for, for my colour and not put the colour up for um, a vote. Not quite sure yet. I'll see. But I know some of you voted for purple. Most of you didn't, however. Most of you voted for the other colours. Uh, purple was, I think, the second least popular. I think the most unpopular colour was actually the JCB yellow. Which i got to say did surprise me a little bit. I thought that more people would want the JCB yellow. But, um, oh well, there we go. Right, let me stop that one. I'll leave him up there. Take a look at the pigs a second. Um, right, we've only got 2,000 fractional it's just a fractional amount that is left there but what i'm thinking i mean they're probably going to run out of silage hey they've got some grass to keep them going i'm not concerned about those they're doing all right and tomorrow we will sell a pallet of wool i've got two items i think that i need to sell from the map um so that it can be ready for your download and back up as far as i can and then move in here and I'm going to do is sort of swing over there. I'd like to get them all to tip sideways if I can. So I'll have to bring the help up. Um, and if we go, you, grain door, tip side left. And tip. Right, so that one will go in. So that's wheat going in there. It's not going to make a vast difference, but it is, it's going to help a little bit. It's gone up into an orange colour. See, we are so limited on the amount of food that we've got at the moment. We, you know... If we were to continue this map, we would really need to, um, oops, went too far, there. We would really need to either plant a lot more or be buying a huge quantity of food for these pigs. But I think buying the food would actually be a really viable way of doing it. I can't see that it wouldn't be. So we'll come up here for this next one. That one is already on tip side, oh, doesn't it? Uh, I want to go, yeah, it is, it's already on tip side left. That must have... Oh, of course it remembers it now, doesn't it? It used to be that when you exited the game and came back in, it didn't remember which side you'd set it to tip on, but now it stays. Whatever you, whatever side you set it to tip on, it stays on that side. Because this one is still tip side back. However, if I change it, there, it will, it'll remember this now. I know it's tip side back because I had it um, tipping into the big grain bin. 
and I was just experimenting with the door and the back to see what um, how fast they were going. Um, tip that one there. Put a load of that in. Right, now these numbers are looking a lot better. That should easily see the pigs through the night because we're not going to carry on doing her harvest now. The bit that I'm going to get ready for the harvest, I will um, get it ready for the morning and then we will carry on with this in the morning. I'll be careful I don't drive any of these trailers underneath that conveyor belt or we're going to start filling them up with manure, which is really not going to be useful. We'll use the little road train out in the field, actually. If I bring this one back through now, It'll tip that in, and I press H so that it's now using the hired help on there. I'm going to see you in the morning. I'm going to have this other little thing ready for the morning so that we can carry on with our harvest. And we'll have the road train down there as, re as well. That'll be ready to go. Um, I wonder if I can tow it back from the dealership. I'll have a look. Um, yeah, so anyway, I will see you in the morning. Right. Good morning. It's just gone seven o'clock. I have dragged the trailers back over. We've got the next bit ready and we've got some pigs to sell. So the wheat and barley has gone back down a bit, but we've still got enough to last us through the day. And just overnight, we have gotten 44 pigs. The reproduction rate here is at 20 minutes, right? Or 19 minutes. That's, that's phenomenal. We're getting a massive number of pigs. So if we just sell those a minute and just direct selling without going and getting the um, the trailer in order to do it, we are looking at, it's, well, it's 1,200 altogether and it costs you 200 to sell them direct. Um, so yeah, if we, we sell all 44 so that we take us back down to 400 pigs again, 8,800 euros we're missing out on because we're not dragging them all the way up to the sell point. However, I feel that it's probably worth it because we want to get on with other things. But that's 44,000 euros just for overnight. And I think that for 44,000 euros, we could probably get most of the food that we actually need for the pig. So it does seem like it would be viable to just keep buying the stuff. But anyway, that's for another time. Um, 19 minutes. Maybe I will go up to 400 pigs on another, maybe in Rattlesnake Valley on the time lapse or something like that. I'm not quite sure. This seems like time lapse territory. Maybe we'd even hit 500 pigs and just keep buying loads of pig food or something. I'm not sure. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that. We'll have a think about it. Anyway, not now. Um, I'll meet you over at the dealership so that we get our next bit underway. Here we go. I'm hoping that this is actually going to work. I don't know if it will. I haven't actually tried it. Um, I did try to stick it on the back of the massive road train of trailers, but the hitch doesn't work. So we're going to use our faithful Fluffy here, and we're going to take the biggest header that is... Yes, it will! The biggest header that is available in the game. It's a Draper 45-foot header. And we're going to stick this one on the tiny little New Holland Combine. I had a few people asking me if I could do this. I don't know if it will fit. I know that you can put some bigger headers on smaller combines. Um, I don't know if this complete extreme will work or not. It would be absolutely epic if it could. Difficult to unload, complicated to keep running, but I think this is going to be very, very awesome. I'm also very keen to find out just how quickly it's going to empty out, or going to rather, it's going to fill up the grain tank um, on the combine. I think this is going to be brilliant. This is going to be brilliant. Not realistic. Not even a little bit realistic. You wouldn't be able to have a header like this on a combine like that. For one, it would probably just weigh the thing down so much that you couldn't physically lift the header off the ground. I'm not... Don't quote me on that. You might be able to. There may be a way to do it, but I still don't think it would be realistic. I don't think that the combine would be able to effectively remove the grain from the straw um, because of the sheer quantity that would be coming in. Um, however, the game doesn't differentiate for things like that so for the the actual game itself we may be able to get this to work so I'm just going to come up round here and I'm going to spin it round and stop over here and then I'll let the combine hitch it up in a second we're going to empty the combine first and we can see how long it takes to empty it out uh, go there do that right are there any options on this bike no there aren't we can honk yeah and that sounds like a car horn right uh, switch that one off. This is one that I'll be getting rid of before I upload the save game and the logging fork. But I don't think I've got any other mods on the map at the moment that are not from the mod hub. I will provide um, links to the actual website ones to make it a bit easier for people to download them if they think that they want it like that. 
Um, but yeah, you will be able to continue on with this series in your own time, however you choose to. So just bring this one over here and I'm going to dump it down onto the ground and just leave it right here on the side of the field. The header will be hitched back onto the combine um, before we finish the series. That header there will be returned. That has just been leased. Um, these two trailers are the only other two things that have been leased and those as they're vanilla game stuff anyway it doesn't really matter so it'll be up to you when you take over the control of the map as to whether or not you keep them leased or if you get rid of them or you know what you do is it that will be entirely up to you I did have someone ask me if they could take over um, it wasn't actually this series it was they wanted to take over the time-lapse series um, so that people can keep watching it and I would love that if you know, any uh, YouTubers out there want to take over running one of my maps and continue on with a, a, a series, you take this one and turn it into a time-lapse series. I know there's a few people that are dabbling in time-lapse now and some of the results are quite pleasing. I quite enjoy watching some of the videos. Um, and yeah, so I'd be interested to see new takes on the same on the material that I've been doing. So it does have the option to hitch it on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, look at the front of that combine. It barely, barely lifts it off the ground. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Let's just put that down again. Um, I'll bring it over to the front and lower it down. Unhitch it. There we go. Right. Are we, are we, are we ready? Let's hitch it on. We'll watch this again. I'm going to get rid of the map a minute. There we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the suspension doesn't just kind of think about lowering down i know in real life that the front wheels of the combine don't have suspension um don't quote me on that i suppose some of the new ones might but the ones that i drove they didn't have suspension it was a solid axle all the way through so this wouldn't have happened it would have just squished the tires big time but yeah that's fantastic the suspension is just instantly bottoming out um no sort of if buts or maybes is, is just crunching it straight down to the bottom let's do that one more time this is brilliant yeah, oh, clonk. <laughs> oh, that's great. Right, okay. Um, let's open up the um, the header. Now, this is the next bit. Is Can the wheel swing underneath? Because that wheel there is the difficult bit. That one goes up and then that one comes under. We're just digging into the ground. Okay. So we've got a 45-foot header on this tiny little combine. It really doesn't like it, does it? Look at that. You can see the way that it's moving, the way that it's handling. It's, it's swaying from side to side. It doesn't like this very much at all, but it's on there. It's doing it. So let's see how it copes with actually doing some cutting. This is going to be brilliant. It also means that we should have a little bit more straw available for coming back to do our, um, our baling. So I've put the hired help going and we're away. It's going flat out, so I don't think it's going to be efficiently removing the straw properly. That grain seems to be... Although I suppose actually we didn't do any fertilizer on this field at all, did we? We didn't do fertilizer on these fields this time round. Um, so the yield isn't going to be that, that great. We're going to have a very poor yield overall. Uh, I suppose actually, yeah, it is coming through quickly. If the, if the yield was better, if we'd had fertilizer on the field, I suppose it would, be, it would have made a difference. Um, it'd probably be more impressive. I think that you'd have filled the tank up that much quicker. So it would be double what we've got now so already we'd be on close to 3,000 litres um, rather than just the 1,500 but nevertheless this is looking pretty cool <laughs> I like this I really do I really like this um, and what we'll do is we'll we'll just watch this to we'll just watch it fill up the one tank and then once the tank is full we'll have the spout come out and um, we'll bring our massive road train over there with tiny little trailers all the way up and see if we can empty it out. Now, what I am curious about is how many times across the field before it fills the tank up. Probably, or by the look of it, we're nearly 50% already. So it'll be while we're coming down the other side. And the one thing I didn't want to do was to empty it out while we're um, facing the wrong way. I'd like to sort of have it stop so that the hired help is operating it while we come to empty it. So what we'll do is we'll get to the other end of the field and then we'll drive back down and start again from that end and then come back up across. I think that's how we'll do it. So we'll let it come up through. We're on 57%. This is brilliant. The New Holland TC590 
running the Draper 45 foot header. Now I don't think this would be feasible in real life. If anybody has any links to videos of a combine using a stupidly oversized header, I would love to see it. And I'd also love to know if anybody has ever done anything similar. I don't imagine it would be physically possible on this kind of scale, but on a slightly smaller scale, um, I imagine that it would be possible because you can have different sized headers on combines. Um, what's the biggest header you've run on a combine where you feel that it was oversized? Give me some examples. Anybody, you know, either links to videos, um, interesting stories, if you've ever seen it, done it yourself, anything like that, I would love to hear it all. Um, I do just want to see, he's already on 82%. Is he going to be able to turn? And what's he going to do for going to the next line? Is it going to recognize the actual full size of the header or is it going to try to go for a smaller header width no it's recognizing it right well i'm just gonna i'm gonna let that one go and i'm gonna come up here we're gonna like i said we want to do it while it's on the move while it's traveling so we'll come up through and we're gonna race down to the other end and we'll get it started down there and then we can bring the road train over and i'm aware that we're running out of time on this episode and i still haven't used the baler so we will that will be our last episode is doing a bit of baling on this field and using the artisan i'd like to use the artisan. and also also there's one other thing uh the pallet the pallet of wool we're on 53 percent at the moment so i would like to at least sell one bit of wool even if we don't do anything else we'll go and get that pallet and we'll take it to the spinnery and we'll sell it so there's two things that we have to do in tomorrow's episode before we leave Sosnovka forever it will be the last time we're ever here I have had a few people say that you know perhaps it'd be really cool if I could keep the save game file for myself and maybe come back here and visit at a later date I thought about it but I thought well no actually I don't think we will because um, you know we're, we're moving on we're gonna go to New Zealand and then after New Zealand we'll go somewhere else I don't know how long we'll stay in New Zealand probably won't be 70 episodes like we've done here it'll probably be a fair bit less um, and we're gonna start exploring lots of different maps and seeing what there is out there because some of the modded maps are phenomenal and I've given a good run now on the basic maps and Goldcrest is gonna be running for another couple of months yet um, and so we'll have a really good run through the basic maps but once we've done the basic maps i would really like to move on and um experience some of the things that the modders have done out there and see what they're what they've been capable of producing i've heard some reports of maps that have got so many extra things thrown in i mean we're going to be going to rattlesnake Fa valley fairly soon and Rattlesnake Valley has got a load of extra stuff. You've got pallets of stuff, you've got sawmills, um, greenhouses that produce extra things and pallets of stuff, all things like that. And there's some fantastic stuff available. And that's in, and there's other maps that have got like quarries and um, mining and all, it's, it's all sorts of stuff. So we've got all this exciting things to look at. And I don't want to um, sort of, I feel that coming back to visit an old map that we've already done isn't gonna work out all that well now we need to try and find a way to get a trailer underneath that spout if we had one trailer we could just sort of back up to it but this this is going to be more tricky this is going to be a lot more tricky so i'm gonna have to jackknife the trailer a bit bring it back round like that yes i can get it just sort of i'm pushing that trailer sideways i'm absolutely damaging the hitch badly i'm not doing any good whatsoever um but we have got everything working. Look at that. We've got a massive great big header on a tiny little combine. We've got a road train going. This is awesome. I am loving this. And uh, yes, you may have guessed, I'm trying to find the best angle to get a um, thumbnail so that I can um, show everybody this in the thumbnail because I think this is gonna be an epic thumbnail for starting the video. So let me just back up. We want to try... Well, I've got to try and get the rest of it now. And I can bring that one round. If I just ignore the trailer that is on behind the purple one and you know, don't pay any attention to the massive damage that I'm currently doing to the hitch on that trailer, we can do that and we can back round. And there we have it. Excellent. Right. I think if we just sort of look at it like that. There we go. Maybe that is a thumbnail. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I'll, um, I'll decide later on. But we certainly can't just pull up alongside it because look at that thing. 
That is that is just awesome. I'm loving that. And that is my timer to say that I've run out of time almost. Um, I don't think that that one is going to... I think it might, be, it might be better if we just kind of leave the trailers and then the combine can kind of go up alongside them. We may even have to take the header off. It might be easier if we were to take the header off of the combine and do it that way. Not quite sure. Let's spin this one round. So that's something that I've wanted to try for a little while and a few people have been suggesting it in the comments section um, on various different videos to put the bigger header on and it does work very nicely. It's quite an efficient way of um, grabbing a bit of extra grain off of the fields. I, I do like it. I'm quite pleased with the results of that. Um, and obviously if we'd fertilised this field properly then we'd have gotten a lot more. Um, but that's no real never mind. I don't think we can worry too much about that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to head up to the dealership. I'll leave the quad bike there for a minute. We'll sell the quad bike tomorrow as well. That's another thing that we've got to do. Um, I'll head up to the dealership and we will get the baler and bring that one down so that is ready to start baling with tomorrow. While I'm driving up there, my question for this week is how would you like me to do the buying and the leasing of machinery when we're in Watea Valley over in um, New Zealand? Do you want me to, number one, buy everything? And I mean everything. I will not lease a single thing on the map. Number two, do you want me to lease everything? And I don't mean quite everything with the leasing because we've already found in Goldcrest that if you lease your main tractors, it does become problematic and you cannot make ends meet. So we will buy a few machines that we drive on a regular basis, um, but everything else we will lease. So similar to Goldcrest, but perhaps trying to push the boundaries of what we can actually lease more than we have in Goldcrest. Um, and then finally, do you want me to do a balance of the two? Do you want me to um, buy machinery when we can afford it and lease machinery when we can't quite afford to buy everything so that we can just keep going, keep everything moving and keeping it all sweet? And I am asking you ever so nicely this week, please, please pick option three or maybe option two. I don't want you to pick option one because I think it's going to be much more difficult for me to be able to do it. I'm including it and I'm allowing it for you because it's your vote and it's your game. You decide how you want me to do things. But just keep in mind that if you do pick option one, it could result in some duller episodes because I don't have any recourse for finding additional funds. Um, I'll, I've will i just got to do the jobs we can do on the farm. We don't have any land that we can go and do contracting jobs on, which is going to make a significant difference to how we get money if you're making me buy everything so just keep that in mind when you're casting your vote but like i said it's your vote and it's your game you guys decide how you want me to do it head into the comment section down below let us know why you're voting for the one you're voting for and of course don't forget that you cast your vote in the top right hand corner that is all i got time for today tomorrow we will be doing our very final episode here in sosniovka We'll be doing some bailing. We will gather up at least one stack with the Arkazan so that we can say that we've done it. Um, I don't think I'll keep that. Actually, I might keep the straw um, because those of you who are taking over the map when you get the save game file from me will be quite grateful, I think, for having a bit of straw available. So I think we will keep... Oh, no, because you've got a field there and you've got you know all of that. So we'll try... Well, maybe we'll sell 16 bales. Um, we'll see. I'm not quite sure. But we've also got some wool that we're going to sell as well. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.